All right, so this is the carcass of my buddy's old gaming PC. Uh, for some reason, through some gamer rage, he decided to kamakamaha the shit out of this thing, exploding his hard drive that, ha that had his OS on it, along with a bunch of other things that went wrong. Um, so today we're gonna try to we're gonna try to refurbish it. We're trying to give it a good clean, and we're gonna try to fix it up and make it a usable PC once again. So come along. Let's uh, let's see what we can do today. As you can see, I got I already have the motherboard out. Uh, so let's start a time lapse and uh, let's get this to an actual working PC. All right, with the power of movie magic and a little bit of editing, uh, we have ourselves a working PC here. Uh, this PC probably dates circa era, you know, 2014, 2013. Um, and honestly, besides the graphics card, it's still actually a usable PC. This thing was extremely dirty. Like, I don't know if he lives in a freaking dust bowl or something, but this thing was disgusting. Um, and uh, unfortunately, Due to the slight abuse, um, <laughs> there was some parts were not working. Like I said, the hard drives were completely toast. He had three one terabyte mechanical hard drives, and uh, yeah, those don't take those don't take physical abuse quite nicely. Uh, they all disintegrated, and uh, unfortunately, whatever data he had on there is completely lost, which is a bit unfortunate. As you know, he was working on a couple projects, which I'm sure he wanted to finish. Other things that weren't working with the PC, uh, the power supply. Power supply was, for some reason, toast. Uh, I, would, I tried everything. It would boot up. Um, well, it would have some lights and everything, but it wouldn't boot up. Uh, so I replaced the power supply uh, with a brand new one, and that seemed to get everything working. Um, I got an SSD to install Windows 10 on right now, which is actually pretty cool considering the specs. At the core of the system is an Intel Core i7-4820K. Uh, this is an Intel Extreme processor, meaning at the time it probably cost around $500, which is insane because these things were uh, basically like super i7s, um, like a, a, a next tier up of like the 4770K. Being that it is an i7-4820K uh, system means that it's on the X79 platform, which is really unique because still to this day we don't see anything with quad channel memory meaning even though this is only ddr3 which is two generations old you can still get relatively good uh, ram speeds with slow memory uh, i think this is only 1600 megahertz memory but you times that by four and you're getting around ddr4 speeds which is really good at the time especially for like video editing or any anything cpu intensive it's got 16 gigabytes of RAM, which, like I said, is is a bit finicky right now. Uh, it technically works, but unfortunately, there is some issues that uh, I can't seem to get any of the kinks out. But right now, uh, it, it should work with only 12 at the moment. Now, cooling this thing is this actually pretty decent, uh, albeit small, uh, Thermaltake water cooler, uh, which means we're going to be able to overclock it a bit, but I'm getting ahead of myself here. Now, the only thing that's actually dating this thing is the GTX 780. Uh, well, this was a great card at the time. It's only got three gigabytes of memory and unfortunately only supports uh, DirectX 11 titles, meaning you're not going to be playing any of the newer uh, games like Starfield or Forza Motorsport, which is a shame because I feel like this is still somewhat powerful and could probably handle it even if it had uh, DirectX 12 support. Like I said, I had to replace the power supply, so I put in an EVGA 700BR power supply. Uh, this is a pretty decent unit and definitely brought this thing back to life. It's got Windows 10 installed on a 120GB SSD, and yeah, that's that's about it. I installed it in this deep cool my cube. What is it called? Morty, we're gonna go get me cube. Yes, yeah, the deep cool my cube 310. Which is actually a pretty decent case. I actually really like this case. Uh, and it's a shame it's no longer available. I think I picked this up for like $45. 
and this is honestly a really decent case for the money. It's got a uh, temper gas side panel, which uh, I have off at the moment, and all the panels are magnetic, which makes it really easy to take, uh, take this thing apart. Um, even like the top panel, super easy to come apart, and it's got decent cable management in the back, and while it doesn't have any perforations in the front for good airflow, it does have a finger width slot uh, for air to sort of squeeze on in there. And honestly, while testing this uh, system out, I didn't see any performance issues as far as uh, heat management. Like it didn't, it didn't overheat or anything. Cable management is actually really good in this case. It's got some rubber grommets to route your PC, your, uh, your motherboard cable and uh, graphics card cables. Uh, it's got a little nice window here to show your power supply. Overall, I think it's built pretty well, considering the price. Once again, this was $45. And we bring it to the back of this thing. Like I said, it's got some magnetic panels. It makes it super easy to take take it on and off. And once we reach the back, it's actually really easy to build in this thing. It's got some Velcro uh, routing cables to make routing your cables relatively easy. You got a nice, nice little clean build there uh, and plenty of space. You got some SSD mounts back here. Uh, it does come with, a, um, actually came with a fan hub. I, I took it off, unfortunately, because uh, I wasn't going to use it. I'm going to use that probably for another project. Uh, but it comes with a fan hub, uh, it's some really decent uh, slots to route your cables in. Uh, it has a removable hard drive bay. Uh, well, you can remove it, uh, but you can't remove it from the actual case because, unfortunately, it doesn't fit. <laughs> you can't physically remove it. Um, like, you can unscrew it. And you can slide it back and forth so you can get your power supply in. Uh, but other than that, it just, um, I don't know why they designed it where you can't physically remove it. You can just sort of take it off to, to move it around. That's a small gripe. You don't, you know, need to remove that thing. But yeah, other than that, this is a fantastic case. And I'm surprised Deep Cool is not still making it. It's not, I didn't purchase it that long ago. And I'm surprised it was already, it's already, I'm surprised it's already out of production. Comes with two fans, one in the rear and one in the front. Uh, which makes us pretty decent. It's got some pretty decent airflow out of the box for once again, $45. <laughs> so in my opinion, if you can find this on sale somewhere, maybe on eBay, some like new old stock, uh, I recommend picking this thing up. It's a pretty good case to build in. But enough about the case. How does this PC, this high-end PC from 2014, handle some modern games? So getting some benchmarks, the i7-4820K is actually still pretty decent as far as modern day processors go. Um, this is overclockable, and at base speeds it kind of sucks, uh, but I was able to put a 4.5 GHz overclock with this uh, water cooler, and we were able to get about 4,300 points in Cinebench R23, which is actually pretty decent as that's equivalent to a modern day, I can't believe I'm saying this, it's equivalent to a modern day laptop processor. Uh, but, you know, that's 11th gen processor versus this 4th gen uh, Ivy Bridge processor. Not too bad on the CPU side. On the GPU side, on the other hand, lots of problems here. Even though this thing technically worked flawlessly, uh, like I said, the GTX 780 is an old C uh, GPU. Um, and unfortunately, it lacks DirectX 12 support, meaning you're not going to play any of the latest titles. Uh, but I was able to play two titles. Uh, I, played, I was able to play Fallout 4 which was able to hit 60 FPS on 1080p high settings, uh, absolutely no problem. That was a game that launched around this era uh, when this sort of, when these components came out. And honestly, you know, it's no, there's no surprise that it should run well, uh, but it's also, it's nice to see that it hits a solid 60 FPS with like zero hiccups whatsoever. The other game I tested was X Defiant. Uh, this is a brand new title that was released, I think like a month ago. And uh, once again, I was able to hit over 60 FPS, which is really decent for uh, this old system considering how new the title is. Now, the game's not demanding, but for the most part, it was a good experience for considering how old this, this system is. But yeah, I know I didn't test that much on this, but it's an old PC, and uh, you know, that's really all I wanted to kind of push with this thing. Uh, the main goal I really wanted today was I spent a lot of time troubleshooting, trying to get this thing up and running, like I said. This thing did not want to boot at all when I first got into my, my apartment. Um, it was just, it was in rough shape, man. Um, so I'm happy to get this thing up and running. And yeah, let me know what you guys want to see. Uh, would you like me to throw in like a really high-end graphics card to see what this 408020 can do? Um, but other than that, mission accomplished today. We got the PC running and yeah, 
once again, let me know if you want to see anything more with this PC. I'd be happy to be happy to sort of test it a little bit further. Uh, another thing, let me know in the comments if you have any uh, solutions to the RAM setting. Like I said, I've got four gig four sticks of RAM installed, but only three of them are being recognized. Uh, so technically, this thing only has 12 gigabytes of memory right now. Uh, for any solutions to maybe try to solve that issue, but until then, I think I'm happy with this thing right now. Anyways, thank you so much for watching, and hopefully you have a good one. Take care now. Bye.